how do we strengthen and bulletproof our immune system? That is the topic for today. The first thing is, what is your immune system? It's basically your defenses, it's your army, it's your military to fight off the bad guys, the pathogens. Pathogens are microbes that cause disease. The derivation of the word immune comes from the Latin word immunus, which means exempt from public service. Now that's interesting. Now if you break down this concept, it really means protected or free against insult, harm, um, or disease. So basically, your immune system protects you against disease. So the immune system is like immigration. So if something foreign enters the body, it has to go through the airways, it has to go maybe through the digestive system, and has to get the stamp of approval from immigration. And that's what your immune system does. It's, it's constantly scanning to see if you are a foreign entity that could cause harm, or if you're part of the body. And once it tags you as a foreign thing that could threaten the body, it will automatically send in the defenses. And that's what we're going to cover next. There are three main barriers for the immune system. You have the skin. So you have all these friendly bacteria on your skin that actually help protect you against foreign invaders. You also have a fat layer that protects you. And you have certain acids that protect you on the skin. Then you have the mucus lining in your gut through the airways, through the sinuses, that also uh, capture and engulf foreign particles or microbes. Inflammation is another barrier that your body puts up to protect itself. The main cells in your immune system are the white blood cells compared to the red blood cells that have a different function. You also have, in addition to white blood cells, you have friendly bacteria that help you as well. And the name of the friendly bacteria collectively is called the microbiome or flora. And those microbes help you in many ways, uh, from absorption of nutrients to recycling of bile to immune defenses. Just one of the things they do as a strategy is they'll, they'll make it so there's just not enough space for a pathogen to live, and they will make it so there's not enough food for that pathogen to live. So let's talk about the defenses of your immune system, the white blood cells. It makes acid to dissolve and kill microbes and pathogens. It will secrete poison to kill off these microbes. It releases free radicals. It will make hydrogen peroxide. You've probably seen that before where you take hydrogen peroxide and you put it on an open cut. It just dissolves. It bubbles up and just kills off the microbes through oxidation. Our white blood cells actually make enzymes to help break down and dissolve microbes. Now, I already mentioned this one. Uh, our microbes compete for food or space, but the white blood cells generate mucus and inflammation. And so these pathogens get caught up in this mucus web and they can't really do anything else. It's like quicksand. Uh, also, our immune system has a memory, everything that's happening. So everything's in a database and it can remember, like so way down the road when there's a microbe that actually comes back in our body and our immune system actually tags it because it has a memory of that and it can destroy it. So it actually learns over time by being exposed to these pathogens. That's called building up your immune system. And this is why as a child, it's not very healthy to keep a child just so utterly sterile that they're never exposed or they're never sick. Um, it's a natural part of building the immune system. Then we get to something called the phagocyte. That's part of our immune system. The phagocytes are cells that eat things. They devour microbes. And they have a ravenous appetite for not just microbes and uh, viruses and bacteria and yeast and fungus, but they will also eat up dead cells and debris. They are the garbage disposal for things that we don't want in our body. Just one liter of blood has six billion of these guys. Now, an interesting thing about phagocytes is that they're stimulated by acid. And I think this is why, this is just my guess, why when people take a lot of synthetic vitamin C, ascorbic acid, certain people get results even with synthetic um, vitamin C simply because of the acid. I would recommend just consuming apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar has been known to acidify the body and speed up phagocytosis um, just like any acid. So if you have a choice, I would recommend the food-based vitamin C, not the synthetic, but use apple cider vinegar to actually speed up phagocytosis. 
And another mechanism that I want to mention that I didn't write down and involves certain white blood cells. If certain white blood cells are infected by a pathogen, we have this built-in mechanism that if the cell is invaded, it goes through something called apoptosis, where it kills itself off for the benefit of the entire body. Because if they let the microbes leach into their DNA and start reproducing, then they become the copy machine that just makes the virus over and over and over. Now, on the flip side, the bad guys, the pathogens, also have their defenses as well. They have the ability to block vitamin D, and they do it through the vitamin D receptor because somehow they know that vitamin D is so essential for the control of your immune system that if they can block it, they lower your, the resistance to invading the cells so they can take it over. The other thing that these sneaky little pathogens do is they can mimic your body tissue so you're not recognized by the immune system. They're very sneaky that way. They can also hide in calcium little igloos, little houses. And this is why antibiotics are, are not effective uh, against something called biofilm. And that's a whole different topic. I put a video down below for more information about that. But these microbes have gotten very, very smart. Another mechanism, especially with microbes like the mycoplasma that doesn't have a cell wall, they keep moving. They'll move into one joint in the synovial fluid, in another joint, and then your immune system is trying to attack them and they miss, and so they keep moving so you can't get them. Uh, another mechanism is they, these microbes have the ability to morph into different structures so your immune system gets confused. Okay, so now let's talk about what to do about it. There's two things. You have things that weaken the immune system and you have things that strengthen the immune system. Now, as far as what weakens the immune system, low nutrient foods, going on a diet that creates nutritional deficiencies. If you take the pandemic, the Spanish flu that occurred in 1918, and you take a look at what happened just before this pandemic, this spread of this virus all over the world that killed 50 to 100 million people. What occurred right before that is World War I. Now, what happened in this war is you had this huge shift of transportation of food. You had rationing. You had the preserving of food. Uh, a lot of the soldiers were given things like uh, canned corned beef. Some foods had dog food. There just wasn't a lot of fresh vegetables and food. So when you do that over a period of time, you weaken the immune system, especially if you put someone under a stressful state like being in a war, that is going to set the person up for a susceptibility to having a virus invading their body. So when you're low in vitamins, trace minerals, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids especially, you are more susceptible to getting sick. Because of the fact that the nutrient defense mechanism is dependent on these nutrients. But I mean, just think about a virus, for example. A virus can't do anything to you. It's not alive unless it invades the cell wall and goes right into your DNA and starts to turn that thing into a copy machine while it hijacks the, uh, the life force from that cell. Now think about what I just said. It has to invade the cell wall, okay? That cell wall is two la layers of fat. It's a bilipid layer of fat, okay? So this is another reason why essential fatty acids are vital to protect your cells. You don't wanna go on a low fat diet when you're run down or sick. So fat and cholesterol, by the way, is very important in a healthy immune system. Cholesterol is an essential building block for certain hormones like cortisol, for example. Cortisol is really important in your immune system. So if cortisol does not have its building blocks, cholesterol, it can't be formed correctly. And then you have stress. This is probably equivalent to nutrient deficiencies. In fact, in practice, I don't remember one case that came in that had some sickness that didn't have some stress event occur right before it. So stress is a very key factor. And I put some links down below for more information on how someone can extract stress. Low sleep also sets you up for being susceptible. Um, then it's connected to stress as well. And glucose. 
I just released a video on this one point. Certain viruses are activated more with glucose fuel versus other fuels. So you know about healthy keto and intermittent fasting. For those of you that are new and you don't know anything about it, check it out. I put a link down below of the exact diet that you need to be on to have a very strong immune system. But now let's talk about what nutrients are really vital in keeping your immune system bulletproof. At the top of the list, we have vitamin C. And I'm not talking about synthetic vitamin C. I'm talking about a, a vitamin C from food or a food concentrate. Now in nature, vitamin C always comes in a complex of many parts, not just one thing, ascorbic acid. But the foods that are highest in vitamin C are sauerkraut, bell peppers, berries, green leafy vegetables. Vitamin C has the power to stimulate the production of more white blood cells. Vitamin C is also stored in large quantities in your adrenal gland to actually help make adrenal hormones. Now, next one that's equally as important, vitamin D. I talked about that in the slide right before this. Vitamin D is an immune modulator. It's not really even a vitamin. It's a hormone uh, factor that actually controls your immune system. So it has a function that goes way beyond just making bone. There's vitamin D receptors in all of your white blood cell and in your DNA. And when I mean modulate the immune system, I mean has a controlling factor over your immune system. And many people are deficient in vitamin D and they don't even know it. But it supports the T cells, okay, which are made by the thymus gland, which is like a training camp for white blood cells. Um, it also protects against pathogens. And it actually makes these two different things that have the capacity to kill microbes very potently. So vitamin D does a lot of different things for your immune system. Next one on the list that's very important is vitamin A, okay? Vitamin A provides the structural integrity of the mucosal cells in the sinus and the respiratory centers. The best source of vitamin A is cod liver oil, egg yolks, butter is a good one because it's a fat soluble uh, vitamin. And by the way, vitamin D is very hard to get from food. So the sun would be probably the best source or as a supplement. Zinc is the most important trace mineral for the immune system. It actually can increase T cells and it does a lot of other things for the immune system, but a lot of people are deficient in zinc, but zinc is very protective against viruses. Garlic is hands down, ranks number one in potency for killing off viruses, bacteria, yeast, fungus, mold. It is very, very potent. Next one is colloidal silver, which is basically silver particles in water. Uh, it's been around for a long time. It starves off the oxygen supply to certain microbes, so it's very potent. Some people use it as a, um, a nasal rinse, and it works really good, but this is a very potent antiviral as well. And then olive leaf. Olive leaf has been studied extensively. I put some links down below for more information on that, but this is great as an antiviral and to actually protect the immune system. There's a lot of other things that can protect the immune system, but from my viewpoint, these are the most powerful. Hey guys, well, thanks for watching. I know I gave you a lot to take in, but if you haven't seen this video on stress, check it out. I think you'll find it fascinating.